what if I told you you don't really have to die? What if you could live on and love on in the cloud based on your memories and legacy? And what if I told you you could go and visit your loved ones there as well? Would that interest you? From the dawn of civilization, we have been trying to leave messages to future generations. People's hands, like these cave paintings in Indonesia from 40,000 BC. And as time marched on, architecture and architects became more important to the role of memorialization and monument building. In this case, a monument to love, the Taj Mahal, or the Ghats of Vanarasi, India, the terracotta warriors in China, Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, and of course, the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. A lot of these things have something in common. They are built for the privileged and the wealthy and the powerful. But you have a legacy. We have a legacy too. We have loved ones. Why can't we share ours with them too? What was once reserved for pharaohs, kings, and queens is now absolutely accessible to all of us in Web3. But I'm gonna shift from those kings and queens to my king and queen. These are my parents, Bob and Ruthie. My father, Dr. Bobby, for the last two years during the pandemic, refused not to work. He, he went to his office and treated patients. I pleaded with him not to, but his sense of joy and purpose in life came, comes from helping other people. COVID caught up with my father. He's intubated in a hospital right now. Okay, now this isn't a pity party, okay? We all have loved ones and we're gonna lose them. We have a limited time on this planet. The real thing my father wanted to do together was for me to design a crypt with him. He wanted a place for us to be together. But the reality is my father could afford plots in a cemetery. So we bought two of them at a cost that's staggering. I mean, we're in Boston, there's a housing crisis here. Probably more expensive, than, we're on par with the most expensive condo here per square foot, certainly Manhattan. But a crypt, what, what would a crypt have gotten us anyways? What would this pile of stone have given me? Could I have gone and visited and have his voice? Could I have gotten a personalized message? Could I have... <laughs> I have heard his tips on making his famous lemon custard pie. No, I couldn't. 100 to 200,000 people pass away every day. And our options for physical memorialization are extraordinarily limited. So being an architect, I obviously, being a contemporary architect, went to my drafting table to figure this out. But I recognize there's a, there's a problem. There's an opportunity to build something new. I'm going to give you for context uh, a little picture of our work that Partisans, which I co-founded in 2013, has built. And what all these things have in common is a hope for creating a legacy, but they certainly don't memorialize a soul, a sauna, a house, a floating ferry terminal, a tower in New York disrupted by a glitch, our first tower to be built in Toronto. 70 stories, I like to call it the lingerie model. Our vision for a sustainable city, a walkable city, a city that contains sprawl. Now, if you haven't noticed, architecture is dependent on scale and growth and more, more matter, more people, more. We're not gonna build our way out of our problems. It's not sustainable. More is less. And as ambitious and different as our projects look at partisans, they're totally conventional in the sense that they operate under the laws of physics. You know, gravity, 
material science, but less obviously, centralized capitalism. Now, I want to keep it light. Let's go back to death. <laughs> These are our options on social media. I want you to look at this really carefully because it's disturbing. You pass away, you want to memorialize your account. It's a stark and unpoetic future for you, for us. In fact, if you look at the chart carefully, you cannot change a memorialized account. It is static, frozen forever in time. Is that right? Let alone the fact that these companies profit from our data forever. I have a problem with that. It's not exactly the little taste of heaven that they promised us. I love these ads from the 90s. I, it was the 90s, so good. There are incredible things happening in, in Web3. This is a project called 5,000 Days. It's by an artist called Beeple. It's an NFT. This NFT chronicles his daily routine of creating a unique piece of art every day for 14 years. This is a time capsule. It's a story of his life and his inspiration every day. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with NFTs, it means non-fungible token. And in short, it's a blockchain-enabled asset, digital asset, whose content, author, and any transactions associated with it are tracked on blockchain, on-chain forever. NFTs, if decentralized storage is utilized and participation in this new world continues, are literally forever, especially if we can manage the ener energy issue. It's the true ambition of the internet, which was to be a cloud, a community that built something incredible through participants and users and keepers. Web3 is about enabling the sovereign individual to participate, be an owner, and also control their data, not someone else through a centralized corporation such as Google or Facebook. It's a beautiful ecosystem of users and people who are enthusiastic about these communities that they're taking part in. Now I'm gonna go from one cloud to my cloud. I wanna introduce you to my hypothesis for a digital blockchain as <clears throat> a digital blockchain enabled ascension ground. Using the same technology we do in architecture to say control a facade with tens of thousands of pieces of steel, we can control geometry such as these clusters, flock them in the same way that a cloud is created out of vapor, except these clusters are time capsules unto themselves. Using these algorithms, we can control each of these clusters, which become the building blocks for a new kind of cloud, kind of like the atoms. You can imagine them like atoms. But each of these clusters is totally unique. We can control the capacity, the qualities. You can cluster them together. You can build with them. And they're multimedia enabled, which means you can actually load information, like an audio file, a video file, if you enter Cumulus, you enter a space in which people survive. Their messages live on. You can, you can go and visit them. It's a cloud of memories, of love, of desires, of experiences that is going to be totally accessible to everybody in this room. Your family can build that crypt. They can build that legacy together and you can go visit them. You can visit a city in the sky, and you can fly through it. You don't have to walk through it. The laws of physics no longer apply. That's what's so amazing about this metaverse. And it's really about liberating architecture. There are many problems we have in the world, but we don't necessarily need to build them physically, but they need to be solved with architects. And to keep things light, I built my own crypt for you guys. <laughs> and if you were to visit the center of the sanctuary, you could go and visit and say hello. So in short, is death inevitable or is it optional? 
Hopefully the latter. Thank you.